after we had our last class, we learned how to do a dimensional analysis. And I took you through the activity, I took you through the process, and we were trying to develop this concept in class. Some of you may feel a little bit shaky on dimensional analysis still at this point. And so I've created this little supplemental video of me talking through and lecturing on dimensional analysis. Now I won't always do this for the activities that we do in class. And if you find yourself shaky on a concept, please get in and see me. But I'm gonna walk you through dimensional analysis as if I were just lecturing it. Okay, so let's start with this, this question. What does a number divided by itself equal? Look at those choices, stop, pick one, and then resume. Well, if you said one, then you're correct, right? So 15 divided by 15 is one. Seven divided by seven is one, okay? So that's one mathematical concept that we will utilize here, okay? Now, in dimensional analysis, we're gonna use that concept, okay? So we could say that there are 12 donuts in a dozen, Okay, we can say that. We could say that 12 donuts equals one dozen donuts. Okay, so if we um, utilize that concept and we think about the quantity of a dozen donuts or the quantity of 12 donuts and we do a division, okay, we know we could get one. All right, so here is a way of setting up a dimensional analysis piece. We call this a unit factor or, um, well, there's other names for it, but that's the only one I'm thinking of right now. So there's 12 donuts divided by one do dozen. They're equal amounts on top and the bottom. So this is a glorified one, a fancy way of writing a number one. Anything divided by itself is equal to one. So those are equivalent amounts. That is what we use in our dimensional analysis, okay? Hey, there's the other. Um, conversion factor is the other name for it. Um, because it's used to convert us between units. Okay, so the next mathematical concept we use is you take any number and you multiply by one, what will you get back? So look at those choices. Pause, select one in your mind, or um, we'll select one and move on. Okay, so, oops, didn't get there. Um, so if you said that number, that would be the answer. So 47 times one equals 47. 0.1 times 1 equals 0.1. So anytime you mount multiply by 1, you're not changing the number. So we utilize those two concepts when we do dimensional analysis. We use the concept that any number divided by itself equals 1, and anything times 1 will give you that number back. And we'll take these glorified ones, these conversion factors, and we will attack them together in order to get our units to convert from one unit to another unit. Okay, so we're going to do some examples using dimensional analysis, working our way through this concept. So let's start with the first one. Okay, the first one has absolutely nothing to do with chemistry. We'll keep on the concept of our donut world. Now, nobody needs to do dimensional analysis to calculate this. Almost everybody is quite capable of doing this without this concept of dimensional analysis. But we have to develop the skill, so we'll start with something non-chemistry related and see how this would work. So we start with writing down what was given to us. We have three and a half, or we could call it 3.5 um, dozen, and dozen what? Well, there are dozen donuts, and we don't want to know how many dozen we have, that's 3.5. We want to know how many donuts that is. So what we will do is we will take the unit we don't want and put it on the bottom. Because anything divided by itself will equal one and we'll get rid of the dozen, it turns into a one. And what we want is actually how many donuts that is. So we'll put that on the top and there are 12 donuts in one. So this is our conversion factor, this is our glorified one. Because the quantity on top and the quantity on bottom are the same, this is equal to one. It is a unit, unity, all right, one. So now our dozen divided by dozen goes away. We're left with donuts as our unit. And then when we multiply 3.5 times 12, we will have 42. So that is using dimensional analysis in the donut world to convert between how many donuts or how many dozen we have to how many donuts we have. It's the only time you get to do it with donuts. From here on out, we'll do it with other units that we use in measurements in chemistry. So now, how many meters are in three kilometers? 
and we're going to do the same thing. We'll start with what we're given. We're given three kilometers. Now here is where the memorization of all of those prefixes will be important. What we would want to do is get rid of the kilometers. Where we're trying to go is to meters. Now we memorize what kilo means. And when you memorize through that process, you know that kilo means a thousand. Be real consistent. Put a one where you see the prefix with the K. Put what it means with the base, with the home base, the meter. Okay? And that will have the kilometers canceling. We'll be left with meters and that will be 3,000 meters as our answer. So this is a very, right now in the world of learning and memorizing these prefixes, a very common kind of conversion going between one unit and another in a certain kind of uh, base like length or mass. Okay, now I want you to try one. So you're going to pause, think about this one, and choose which one of those would be the correct answer. And when you think you've got it to the correct number of significant figures, resume. Okay, we're going to go ahead and work through it together and make sure that you're on the right track. What are we going to start with? We're going to start with a 0 0.40, oh, there's a 0 in there, 0 .040, and this is grams. But we don't want grams. We want micrograms. Okay, now here's where students might get f messed up. Is where do I put my 1? Always put your 1 where you see the prefix, micro. And then what that means with the base unit. So micro means 10 to the minus 6. So this is going to give me to the correct number of significant figures. Well, there's only two significant figures in this answer, in this number here. So my answer can only have two. So it's going to be 4.0. And then when I go ahead and divide by the 10 to the minus 6, I will have times 10 to the fourth micrograms. So that would be how many, did I go the right way, grams? to microgram. Yes. Okay. So if you answered number two, then you would have the correct answer to the correct number of significant figures. Now, sometimes we're going to have to go between the English and the metric system. So you've got to make sure you've got a few memorized English metric conversions and I've got the ones up there that are handy to have memorized for length, for mass, and for volume and make sure you spend a little bit of time committing those to memory. So let's do another calculation here. I want to figure out the volume of a box. Okay, so I've got myself a box. Hmm. My box looks like a nice little uh, uh, cube. That's really not what this is. But remember that the volume of a box is length times width times height. Okay, so we have those three dimensions that we have to consider there. In this box, we want to know our answer of the volume in units of cubic centimeters. And they gave me three lengths here. They gave one of them in centimeters. It was 3.0 centimeters. Okay, they gave me that one from here to here in centimeters. Um, the other ones they didn't give to me in centimeters. They gave one of them in inches, and it was four inches. And that's length, okay, then they gave me from here to here. Well, this is a long one. It is five meters. So now I have all of those dimensions and I just have to multiply them together to get my answer, except I have to watch my units. I need them all to be in centimeters in order to get this volume. Well, one of them is already in centimeters. That's easy enough. 3.0 centimeters. The next one is not in centimeters, it is in meters. So I know I need to multiply by centimeters and I could go off and calculate it into centimeters off to the side, but let's just go ahead and take that um, five meters and convert it to centimeters. So I don't want meters, I do want centimeters. Okay, so I'm multiplying by this. When I do this conversion, it'll be in centimeters. I'm going to put a one with the prefix and I'm going to put what it means, and centi means 10 to the minus 2. I'll put that there, and now when I do this calculation, it will be in units of centimeters left over. And the last one is the inches, okay, it's the last dimension of the three. They told me that it was 4 inches. I don't want inches. I want centimeters. 
okay? And there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So now my inches are canceling and I'm left with centimeters. So I have a centimeter here, I have a centimeter here, I have a centimeter here, so that's going to give me cubic centimeters. And when I multiply and divide, as we see in here, and you'll want to make sure you're practicing that with your calculator, when you do all of the work with those numbers, you're going to get 1.5 times 10 to the fourth cubic centimeters. Okay, so what have we done so far? We've got the initial concept of just using dimensional analysis with the understanding that anything divided by itself equals one, and if you take something times one, you get that something back, but it makes our units change. We understand the concept that when we are using our prefixes, we put a one with the prefix and what it means from that table that we memorize with the base unit, and that gives us our value here. We did that again and practiced it here. We watched our units very carefully and we realized that from time to time we are going to have to make sure that we, and I can see here that on my screen this is not showing up, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have those units in there, okay, so we don't have to re-record that. We've got our inches canceling, we're left with the centimeters here, and now we've got the um, understanding that we're sometimes going to have to have memorized relationships between centimeters. I mean, metric and English systems when we're trying to do our dimensional analysis. The second problem on this slide, we see that we are going to have some units on both the numerator and in the denominator that we're going to be changing. So let us start by putting um, our given, which is 343 meters per second down on our screen. Okay, so it's 300 and 43, and I'm going to write instead of with the slash for the meters per second, I'm going to write it meters over seconds. So there's two things that are going to have to happen here. Number one, we're going from meters to miles, and number two, we're going from seconds to hours. So we can choose whichever one we want to convert first and work our way through it, okay? So let's work with the meters. I don't want meters. Now, if I look at some of the conversions I've got down there, I am showing you ones that I suggest that you have memorized, and that's the miles and the meters. You need to know those. The time ones, I think everybody knows that there's 60 seconds in a minute, there's 60 minutes in an hour, but they're written down there for us to look at anyway. So now, why did I put the meter down here? I want to cancel the meter because I don't want it in meters, and so I can go to miles. And there is 16, oh, whoops, I've got it in the wrong place. So we're going to scratch that out and put 1609. Notice that that meters is um, with the 1609 and the one is with the miles. So now my meters are canceling and I've got my numerator where I want it. But I, now I have to work with the seconds. I don't want seconds, I want hours. Now I don't have memorized how many seconds are in an hour, but I do know how many seconds are in a minute. So I am going to put a second in the numerator. So we haven't seen this yet. I'm trying to cancel something that's in the denominator, so I have to put it opposite. I'm going to put the seconds in the numerator, and I'm going to go to minutes. And I know there's 60 seconds in a minute, okay? And then that gets the seconds canceled, but I'm sitting with minutes, and I don't want minutes. Minutes is in the denominator, so I'm going to put minutes in the numerator so they'll cancel, and I'm trying to go to hours. And there's 60 minutes in an hour. Okay, and so now what do I have? The minutes are canceling, and I have left the miles, and I have the hours. So on my calculator, I would take 343 times 60 times 60 divided by 1609, and that would give my answer in miles per hour. Now, I didn't put that in my calculator, but you can, and you can determine what that value is. Now the next one we're going to look through is to see what in the world we need to do when the units are cubed or could be squared. You've got to take that into account. So here we have 15 meters cubed given to us. And we don't want meters cubed. What it's asking for is centimeters cubed. Now, 
We memorize some things. We memorize what centi means. So we put a one with the centi, with the prefix, and what it means with the other. But these are cubed. And if these are cubed, the number also has to be cubed. So that is going to cancel the meters and we'll be left with centimeters cubed and it tells us what I have to do with our numbers. So what we have with our numbers is we have 15 and 1 cubed is 1. 10 to the minus 3 cubed is 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so that is what we're actually doing with our numbers which is the same as 15 times 10 to the 6th. And if I move my decimal place over 1, that would be 1.5 times 10 to the 7th centimeters. Now those manipulations I did here, your calculator will do it just fine for you. If you do 15, and this is in the bottom, divided by, um, and you might want to put it into your calculator as 1e to the negative 6 would be a way to put that into your calculator. Um, 15 divided by 1 e to the negative 6 would give you this answer without any trouble. Okay, our last example that we have for this little supplemental lecture is to go between milligrams to kilograms. So let's write down the given. We have 2.9 times 10 to the 11th and this is milligrams. Now, I do not know a relationship from milligrams straight to kilograms. And there's no need memorizing those. What we have to do is realize when we're going from one prefix unit to another prefix unit, we're going to want to go by way of home base. So what we want to do is go from milligrams first to grams because the relationship I memorized for milli is how it relates to grams. All right, so we put a one with the prefix and what it means with the other. Now before I go on and work this, I want to just kind of talk to you a little bit about what I've done here. Most students coming out of high school, when they saw something like this, would have always said, it takes a thousand milligrams to equal one gram. And you would have put this in instead. There is nothing wrong with that. It is an absolutely true statement. But what you're doing, and you don't realize it, is you've just memorized a thing and you're throwing your numbers down. But what you're doing is a lot of math manipulation by saying, well, if a gram is a thousandth of, or a microgram is a, thou a thousandth of a gram, then it would take a thousand of them to equal one. So there's a little exercise you're having to do that in some translation. And what I'm trying to do is give you a method that will work for every unit that you're dealing with, every prefix unit that you're dealing with. And that is if you'll put a one where the prefix is and what you memorize off the table with the base unit, you'll always have them in the wrong, right place. I see so many students end up putting their numbers in the wrong place because they've memorized this system and it just doesn't work with other things that they're working with. Okay, and here's where they usually go wrong. They might try using what I see here in place of what we see here. And we know that we don't want grams, we want kilograms. And students have a hard time putting their 1,000 in the right place here. But if you put a 1 with the prefix, and kilo means 1,000, or 10 to the third, okay, then you'll get things in the right place. So the milligram is canceling, okay. The gram is canceling, and now we will have our answer in units of kilograms, okay? And so what is that? That's 2.9 times 10, squeaky, 10 to the fifth kilograms. Okay, so in this we see an example of what we do if we're trying to cancel things that are in the denominator, make sure they go into the numerator. Here we see an example of what to do if your unit is cubed or could have been squared, make sure you also cube or square the meaning. This is essential, so we're going to put some exclamation points right here. So many times students forget to do this. Here we see that if you are going from one prefixed unit to another prefixed unit that you need to go to home base, go to the grams first before you move on. And with those methods that we've looked at 
you will be able to do dimensional analysis as a very important tool solving problems in this class.